So let me, t let, let, let me lay out what, what I'm going to try to do here, and I'll try to cut it back a little bit. So John asked me to lay out, step back and lay out the landscape, or you know, what are ballot images? And who uses them and why? And who doesn't like them and why? Compare them to the other big trend that's come on in audits and vote verification. And, and, and basically, um, just show you, so we're not talking about concepts, but you can see what we're talking about, the possibilities and some, and some of the soft spots. So who am I? I I'm a journalist. I covered election and democracies for national publications for more than two decades. I covered money and politics for NPR until they said there wasn't a, a beat worth covering outside of Washington. That was 1999. <laughs> in 2004, I was the executive producer of an Air America radio show, trying to figure out what happened in Ohio, and I found Bob. And we raised a bunch of money, and online, on the air, no one went, and, um, yeah, and then, you know, and so here we are, 15 years later. So, um, what is a ballot is now being redefined. We've got to really step back and understand this for a second. It's, you know, it's not necessarily just a piece of paper. Some people think it is. Some people think it's a digital image. Some people think it's a piece of paper that's marked by a, a pen that's handheld. Some people think it's a piece of paper that has a printout on it. It could be a text print. It could be a barcode. All of this is in play right now. And where this really matters is at the finish line. Because between election day and the time votes are certified, there are a couple phases that happen. And these are not well understood. They vary state to state. There's not a lot of transparency. There's, there's a stage called the canvas, where they're supposed to reconcile the votes. There's the, state, there's the stage where there might be recounts or challenges. And some states want to have audits in there, which can be a digression, and the lawyers can lawyer up and run out the clock. Anyway, so what it comes down to is a simple question. What evidence confirms the election results or the vote count? And that goes right back to the ballot that's being used, right back. So what's happening these, I, so I cover this stuff because I think this is interesting and I think it has real ramifications. And for most of my time covering elections, I have not covered the finish line. I've covered old school voter suppression because it's more tangible, and I'm not a computer guy, you know, and I'm not a programmer like Jim at the end there. But I've known after 15 years that we are on a real cusp across the country, just like in California, like you, you were mentioning. We're buying new voting systems, and systems, they're not one computer. It's registration, it's tabulation, it's voter contact, contact, it's it's the whole thing. For the, and these systems are going to last, typically, they last 10 or 15 years before money comes around to get the next ones. And so what I want to talk about here is that the technology, uh, in, in the latest round of technology, um, it's not what was bought after Florida. Some of it has similar elements. There's some new stuff. But I want to show you what are the ballot image portion of this because um, it represents to me, now this is where I get a little editorial, I think the best instance to try to have an evidence trail. You know, John went down to Miami, John Henry Day, and saw these people acting like lunatics outside. And I wrote about it because they were, because it was, you know, it's easy copy. Outside the, you know, the Miami Dade County Supervisor of Election Office last November. If they had used images in 15 minutes, they could have figured out that there were really 20,000 undervotes or no votes on that poorly designed one page on one side of a multi-card ballot mm -hmm. in that US Senate race. Now, if the lawyers wanted to fight about that, you'd be dealing with evidence, not this conspiracy mm -hmm. theory garbage. So anyway, so here's what I want to do. Um, I, I, so I, I, um, I went down to Florida last November to try to cover the, what, was gonna, what I thought was going to be tough finish lines in Florida and Georgia. And do, do, who, do, do people here know, know who Ian Sancho is? Yes. Okay, so Ian Sancho was the supervisor of elections in Leon County, which is, he just retired Florida. And he was put in charge of the 2000 recount 
by the Florida Supreme Court before the U.S. Supreme Court shut it down as the technical advisor. So after that, he kind of got a bug in his head that we have to design the best possible voting systems. And um, so I went down to see what he developed. And they used something that is not certified by the state of Florida. It goes way beyond what is legal. In fact, it might even be illegal, but they do it anyway. And what they do, and I'm gonna, I want to, I'm going to describe what it is. It's, it's actually, and then I'm going to show you so you can see it. What they do is this. They use paper ballots that are marked by hand, and they run them through two scanners. The first scanners are on election night. The second scanners, after they maintain their ballot inventory, are unattached, and then they use software that can, and I can show, and I will show you what the software is because you'll see that they can compare the results and they can dig in and they can create a library that's a digital analysis backed up by paper that you can pull. And there you can trace down and, and fight about who really won these elections. So, um, I mean, I have these remarks, but I'm gonna try to really go through it. So, so the first thing is this. Um, we're, talking about, we're talking about stages of equipment here. So I'm going to show you the first 45 seconds of a sales video from a new vendor and what they're doing. And what you're going to see is you're going to see if you just, this is not what they're talking about. You'll see it, what comes up on the screen, besides all the buzzwords, that you're going to be looking at a computer screen, like I'm looking at this. And you'll see software tabs. And then you will see, and you'll see the paper ballots that are marked by hand going through a high-speed scanner. And at 45 seconds, I will press stop, and you'll see what John put up there, which is a digital image of a ballot. Now, m that's what most places use to count. But the process doesn't have to stop there. But this is a feature that's being built into most of these new machines and systems that are being put out there. So instead of me talking about it, so I'm just gonna, you know, so for 45 seconds, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna ask everyone to sort of like- Make it large. Them, and then we'll stop. Hi, today we're here to talk about Verity Central, which is the next generation of Partner Civic's high-speed digital scanning technology. As part of the Verity family, everything about our high-speed scanning solution has been designed around hey, three core values: usability, adaptability, and transparency. And it's off the shelf. That means the Verity Central was designed to have a modern, fresh, and intuitive yeah. interface that almost anybody can use Your comfortably with minimal training. Usability also means that our system is designed to process all your ballots that, without it. tabulating them. Right there, that stop, right there. Okay, so what just, you know, before they moved on, you saw, which what John picked up before, which is a digital image of one side of a ballot card. And um, so, so they analyzed that. Okay, um, let me just go here. So, um, okay, so when John has, has John, has, you know, has filed lawsuits to preserve those images, but guess what? And Tim Kanovic in Florida did not know this. There's more than one set of images mm -hmm. that you can go for. And let me t and, and because in Broward County, Florida, like Leon County, they do something different. They take all of the paper ballots and they run them through a second system. Mm -hmm. Now this second system is called dual verification by the technical people was actually suggested by National Institutes of Standards and Technology in 2005 and 2006 as the best way to deal with, to, to back up the best paper and digital analytics. And guess what? The voting machine industry lobbied and got yeah. it pulled out, yeah. pulled away. So around here, um, you know, people, you know, Laura has worked with, this fellow Larry Moore, who created this company called Clear Audit. They, they first developed it in Humboldt County. The system is just so simple. You have an underlying paper record. You don't hack paper. You have two sets of scans, and you have good analytics, and you build a library of the paper so you can find it if you want to fight about it. So, so, so Larry Moore built this company called Clear Ballot. And what they do is they use off the shelf, and I saw this, I'm going to show you a video in a second, three and a half minutes of how they use it. And so, okay, so for example, what you saw there was a full screen ballot 
is as far as most of these places go. And you get what John showed next, which was that kind of spreadsheet-y looking thing, which is called the cast vote record, which is like all like the codes of like, these are the races and these are, you know, it's very opaque and dense, right? It is not user-friendly. Larry Moore created an interface that attaches the digital images of every vote in, in, in everything that's scanned. And you can zoom in and zoom out to figure out is something being read or not read correctly or not. So um, why am I talking about this? I'm going to show, show you this. Because the, this is the potential that is out there right now with the technology that, is, that is currently exists and is being sold. What they do on this is not done widely. It's maybe done in a couple dozen counties across the country. So this is a three and a half minute video where they're going to show you how they use digital ballot images from that second scan to figure out who won and who didn't win a school board race separated by six votes. So I thought this is really fascinating because when Bob and I were trying to, like, we're in Ohio in 2004, and you know, Bob was filing lawsuits for recounts for the Greens, and John Boniface was there doing it for the Greens and the Libertarians. We never even got anywhere close to looking at stuff like this. I mean, so this is where, you know, this is the, this is the arc. So let's take a look at that. Um, let me see if I can get out of this. Let's see. Okay, look, look, and so, so, yep, 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 and okay. So I'm gonna just go here. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so here we go. Okay, wait a second, and I'll go back to the start. Three and a half minutes. Welcome to Clear Mouth series of your videos. In this video. Oh, no, wait a second. This is not right. Wait, uh, no, that's not the right one. Um, okay, wait a second. Um, let, me, let me get out of this. Uh, it's this one here. Uh, it's, it's, here, it's this one. Welcome to Clear Mouth series of feature videos. In this video, oh, wait a second, this is not the right one. Um, um, this is really important stuff. This, if you visualize how it works, it's so important. Welcome to series of feature videos. Wait, stop. In this video, we'll demonstrate. Um, let me just go down here. I'm yeah, sorry, this is not my, it's not my computer. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Do a jump link or something from the past? No, I don't know. Let's just let's just. Because your documents there, are Word document. Let's I just do, let's just do it like this. Oh, there it is. It just moved past. Uh, okay, here it goes. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So let's start again. Let's see if this works. There we go. Okay. Okay. This is what they're hiding from us. It makes it's rendering is what it's doing. And it's really important video. So, yeah. So anyway, what, what we're going to see is. Um, not the, the results of scanning a full page. I'm just, what you're going to see is after they have scanned you know, the, the paper, they're able to break up um, the ink marks and, the, and what's filled with them and analyze them and that are attached to every vote and they're presented in a way that you can sort through it really quickly and mm -hmm. look at the least confident and more confident marks based on the, the sloppiness around the ovals that are filled in. Mm -hmm. Use the microphone. And um, and um, I'm just waiting for this to go. I, I don't believe it's going to. Yeah, I don't either. Maybe it's re refreshing. Uh, refresh. Yeah, I would refresh it. Okay. Um, um, let's just try this. Welcome to Clear Mouth series of future videos. Full screen. In this video, we'll Just demonstrate how to resolve close races or avoid a recount by reviewing all votes in minutes. Okay. Starting on the dashboard, we can see there are over 151,000 ballots in this election. Now we'll navigate to the contest report. The contest report provides a summary of the election. By clicking on the margin percentage column, we sort the table in descending order. Blanks indicate uncontested races. Two contests were within the 0.5% margin that would trigger a recount. For this demonstration, we'll look at the Harrison School District Director race. Okay, this is it. Remember, there are 151,000 ballots in this election, so in a manual recount, the first step would be to manually find the 8,060 ballots 
commingled with all 151,000 ballots, which are spread out over 732 ballot boxes. Now let's see how you would resolve a close race with clear ballot. We'll click on the contest, and since this is a vote for three contest, we can immediately see that the third and fourth place candidates have a six vote difference. Let's start by looking at Stephen Siebert's votes. By clicking on his votes, we're able to see the vote visualization. Here we're looking for any votes that were counted for Siebert that could be considered a hesitation mark. By hovering over each voted oval, we immediately see the contest zone, allowing us to see if the marks are consistent. Each oval also links to its corresponding ballot, allowing election officials to review the entire ballot. We'll also look at overvotes and undervotes that could show voter intent and should be considered votes. Here you'll see there's a light mark that was missed, and if we click on it, we'll see clear voter intent for Seaburn. We can also check the ballot provenance, which tells us how the ballot was adjudicated. That tells us the other two candidates were counted, but because of the light mark, Siebert was missed. Now that puts him in the lead by seven votes. We can continue to scan through the rest of Siebert's under. To have the file on and it looks like there aren't any others that look like votes. Next, we'll look at Ryan Thompson's votes. Again, we're looking for any votes that could be considered a hesitation mark, which would put him... Come on, computer. I'm pulling for you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if it doesn't pull, I, I can I can pick this up here. Okay, so 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 what so. Yeah, just, um, okay, why don't we just stop this? Okay, so yeah. so so the point the, the point is this the, the point is this you're, you're you're able to go the point is this you're able to get it into stuff <coughs> at a much more granular level. Now, mm -hmm. now, um, so 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 let so, so let, let me just let me just here for a second. Okay, so what did we just see? Okay, I think this is a really smart use of analog and digital technology using the further behind Seabird okay. oh, or overvotes or undervotes that could have been missed by the sub. Okay, let's just stop this. This is, this is uh, where and could be considered votes. Now we know there would need to be seven of them for the race to be considered a tie. This looks like it could be a check mark, but it's actually just a voter's message. We can conclude after examining nearly 4,300 undervotes for Thompson. There were none that could reasonably be challenged as having outside the oval or lightly marked voter intent. This recount was also done manually over the course of three weeks at a great expense to the county. A manual recount can be avoided entirely when you have the modern tools available to present all evidence of voter intent quickly and concisely. We look forward to showing you more about our software. Okay, now if you want to do a manual count and you want to examine things in person, which I think can be a very good idea, the order that these ballots are scanned comes out and they're put in storage boxes that way. And they're scanned, every scan is tied to each machine in a precinct. It's that granular, it's not a whole precinct, it's machines. So you know what? What we'll fight about the paper, you know exactly where to find it. And you, it, so, so what I'm saying here is, what did we see? I think this is the, the best use of smart analog and smart digital technology based on what is come, being put into these systems where they're pulling from off the shelf components. And this is, you know, so the, the fight here, or the challenge, is to get this stuff used so that people themselves can see and, and be part of this, so they're not told what to believe. So, um, again, you have handmarked paper ballots, a record that can't be hacked. You have two independent scans using different software tools to check the results against each other. You can drill down, and if you need to, you have a searchable library of the paper, not a haystack or a manageable pile to retrieve the ballot. Now, who doesn't like this? 
Um, there are people who don't like this, including some of our friends in the progressive activist community. And um, let me just, without spending too much time on this, the reason they don't like it is because it involves software. And, and, um, and software cannot be trusted. And, and Jim Sofer, who I've talked about, we've had very heated and polite discussions about this. Jim, you know, Jim is not in favor of, the, of some of these. Um, and, and I understand why, because soft, but, but we have to then take a look at, um, at the claim that, that, that ballot images can be hacked or swapped by hackers. Well, let's, let's think about this now. Um, no system is perfect. But to try to swap in images at scale is a very hard thing to do, especially in today's cybersecurity environment. And if you want to know how hard it is, I'm not even sure I can say this. Alex Halderman, who was often cited as being an expert in hacking, one of his students was caught hacking West Virginia where they had a smartphone voting pilot last November and it launched an FBI investigation. So you know what? It's not as easy as these folks think. And now let me say, that paper is not so perfect either. Because take a look at North Carolina, the ninth district, where people basically you know, snared you know, all those absentee ballots and filled it out. So, so, let, so we've got to be realistic about this. You know, in terms of, nothing's perfect, but like what scales? And what are the costs and the benefits? And, the, and, and how hard can it really be? So when, when I think about, um, so, so the, the folks who don't like, the folks who don't like ballot images are, are, are pushing, and they came, this came out of Ohio to post Ohio 2004, are pushing a different audit process. And they have been very successful getting this written into laws in lots of states. And quite frankly, I, I think it's, I don't, it has uses, but it is, here's what it is. You can, you can, tell, you can read your own judgments. It's called a risk limiting audit which is a wonderful name. The Hash X 200E smart device and Hash X 200E. Your permission is required to connect your device to this TV. Allow button issues. Here. Yeah, so anyway, so, um, so here's the thing. A risk limiting audit doesn't want you to use any software. They want you to basically collect all the paper, which is, mm -hmm. has ballot custody potential problems, and randomly draw them and see if you can, if your results match what the, the machine, the first tabulation gives you. And depending on how close, close to the race, you have to keep doing these draws to get basically a 95% the 95% confidence um, th threshold. Here's the thing. Do we want to estimate the results of, of elections, or do we want to have an accounting process? And personally, and this is where I really part with these folks, and these folks, this is verified voting, and this is common cause, and this is the Brennan Center. And they have lobbied hard on this. And they've gotten this methodology put into state law and audits that are supposed to occur in that narrow window post-election day and pre-certification. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, if you took that school board election, it could not have a risk-limiting audit. You would have a full hand count. And then where does that leave you? And if you start a process in between election night and certification that you can't finish and the stakes are high, like, do I need to give an example? Florida's three simultaneous recounts last November, where Palm Beach County, because they had Sequoia machines that could only do one race at a time, they overheated and burned up, and then it reverted to the election night totals. Yeah. You know that. So the thing is this: you have this, you have this possibility of, you know, the question is how good is good enough? How good is good enough? Do you want to have an estimated? you know, confidence mark? Do you want to have something that's more evidence-based and a fuller accounting process? To me, I, I, I obviously side with the fuller accounting process. So, by the way, um, only one state tries to do this, these image-based audits. And I will show you quickly a PowerPoint that they presented, because they examined the plus and minuses of doing, you know, these image-based audits and the statistical risk-limiting limiting audits. It's the state of Maryland. And they're not invited to any of these conferences by verified voting or any of the academics, which is another thing. But it, it's just, and verified voting's lobbyists defeated a bill that would have allowed those kinds of ballot images mm -hmm. to be used in recounts in Florida in 2020. The closest we would have come this spring to any swing state 
having a better recount process, defeated by verified voting lobbies and working with yeah. the House Republicans there who don't want to have people having a closer look. I mean, you talk about strange bed bedfellows. It's apps, and by the way, it had the support of the State Supervisor of Associations, Professional Association, which took six years to get, and they stopped it. So, um, so, you know, so the stakes here really are real. So let me just show you this PowerPoint because very, very quickly, because what it has in it is it shows you what they discovered about bad scan, scanning technology. Mm -hmm. the, so remember I said, there's that initial tabulation scan on election night, and people just stopped right there. The state of Maryland, they forced ESNS by threatening to sue, but they didn't, to give them their decrypted ballot images so they could get them to send them to clear ballot and have them analyze them. Now, doing a second scan independently would have been better. But you know, in the, we, sometimes we have to take what we can get. By the way, they also forced ESNS to decrypt some of their systems that pr print the barcodes on them. Because you have the barcodes on top, and then you have names down below to see if they matched. Mm -hmm. And what they found was that the printing of the barcodes was sloppier and more error prone than the actual text. So let's just, but that's not in here, but, but let, uh, let, let's just, let, let's just uh, escape. I'm just, gonna just, I'm just gonna go through this PowerPoint thing very, very quickly, because basically it, it makes these points. And, and so, so this is a presentation put together by the Deputy Director of Elections in the state of Maryland that she tried to show her colleagues at the National Association of Secretaries of State and, and state election directors. Uh, Linda Lamont or something? Yeah, yeah, this is she works for Linda Lamont. I mean, it, it, it's astounding to me that, you know, you know, Linda Lamont, who was the state election director in a state that went early in on DREs and basically has done a complete 180. That's true. And, and so, so I, I don't know if, it, 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 let's see if this goes, is this full screen? I uh, think it's right up top there. Um, and um, here he is. Right. Let's go to the slideshow and start slideshow and start. The question start. Start. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can just go through this. And this is. Okay. So, okay. So, so uh, it's got full screen. Okay. So I'm just going. This I'm, is the next slide. Right okay. There. I'm, I'm okay. gonna I'm gonna go through this fast. Okay. So yep. so this is her her, her thing. So uh, let's. One more. Right there. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> They got, in, in 2016, they have a paper-based huh. system, which is what we talked about. And, and, and they also... Oh, look what it did. Oh. Just advance another slide. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Wow. Mm. What is that? Uh, mm. it, it's the transition between slides is corrupting <laughs> the Russians. Mm. Oh, wait a second. Yeah. Uh, wait a second. Let, 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 you know what? I, I, I want to. I, 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 I just. I, I'm just going to go into into the, into, into the thing itself. Yeah. And, and and you guys will see enough. Okay. So 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 so, so let's just let's just go through this. So so they took a look. At, they took a look at th at, at different at different kind of the pros and cons of doing these different kinds of audits. Okay. The risk limiting audits. They said you need a statistician. The math is hard. You know, these fixed percentage audits, audits, which is, you know, you grab a certain number and, and you look at it, you use a 10 sided dice to select a precinct. And um, I'm going to see if this works here. Okay. And, and okay. So I'm not going to waste you guys' time with this. So, um, and, and then doing the, the, the digital image audit. So, what did Leib learn? Three audit methods to verify the accuracy of voting systems. What did they learn? Ballot level audits using RLA, risk limiting audits. They're difficult to estimate the budget and staff size. You need a statistician. They're hard to explain. A close margin of victory only means a complete manual re-tabulation or recount. And then there's some human error in there because you're managing all this paper. Okay, this fixed percentage audit is much the same. This independent one, obviously, they chose it. And they said it retabulates 100%, so it's not an estimate. It maximizes tech use of technology, requires very little resources. It can compl this is the most important. It can be completed prior to certification. You know, this is okay, and then uh, you know, and okay, and then and, and, and the audit results and images are available for public review. So, so, so let's so 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 they went with clear ballot. Okay, so now let's look at this. Now this is where things get really interesting. Remember, we started this by looking at that first you know machine, you know precinct or vote center tabulator that was doing the first initial scan. They looked at the images. Guess what they found? They found that there were some scanner errors that were screwing up the counts. Mm -hmm. 
Now, that's not such a surprise considering nothing is perfect, but look at it. So what they found here was on this second box, on the way in, a fold in the paper was counted as a vote. Wow. Because, because the scanner picked it up. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, this is pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, considering what some of us have not seen, any kind of you know, recounting or, or anything, well, let's look at another one. Here, they let to see if the full ballot, you know, see if the, see, they look, you can pull back and see the, the fold clearly why it came through. Because it was right in the middle. That, and that's what it was, and that's what, so it was picked up. Okay, here we have scratches from the scanner's lens. Now, what, why would a scratch be on the scanner's lens? Maybe a piece of felt from the end of a pen would be sticking on a piece of paper that goes through and then gets stuck to the glass. As I've, okay, and here, it, it, it caused an overvote, which means more than one vote is recorded and therefore it disqualifies you for that contest. Okay, so now this thing on the bottom here is, you know, this, this little thing over here is that, that spreadsheet thing is that cast vote record. It's very, very opaque. But the thing is, what you can do here is you can, you can, you can pair up a, you know, a full ballot or a part of a ballot with that bigger chart and start figuring out where things are counted right or wrong, okay? And, and here, this had this thing they call double pull. What does that mean? It means that two pieces of paper went through at the same time and counted at once. Uh, okay. Okay, so, you know, this is cool stuff. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Um, multiple feed ballots show different contests, you know, that, that we expected to see. <sighs> like, again, you know, the, you know, okay, and then, um, then, then what kind of questions can this answer? So they say, why would a large number of voters show up and, not, and, and vote for more than one candidate for president? Well, sometimes they do. And, and you could take a look and see. And by, by, you know, you, you've got that like, grid thing on the left that pulls up the image on the right. And if you don't want to fight over the digital images, you have them in a library. You can pull the paper. And I mean, come on, you've got so much more educated and intelligent, you know, like, you know, public exercise. Uh, why would a large number show up and not vote? So you can check it out and see, under votes. Um, why would voters decide to cast blank ballots? You could see if they, if they were blank. And, and then you could find other stuff. And this is important too, but this gets a little more weedy. You could find poll worker error. Like they didn't pull off the, the tab at the bottom. So you could figure out where you gotta like, you know, buck up the process a little bit. You know, okay. Now this is interesting. Identifying equipment issues. Okay, so here is you know here's the barcode ballots, the one the ballot marking device. Remember I said at the beginning we we're redefining what it is to be have like a ballot or record. That's not an ink mark on a piece of paper. That is a computer that is basically adjusting what it thinks is your vote and printing it. Mm -hmm. And in this case, in you know sloppy or blurry barcodes, um, which they found by the way were not as precise as the actual names and text. And you, some of these are these other printing errors and other way, but so, so, so here's the thing. And this, I, I really love this last thing. This is how, you know, you would think people, I don't know, of a certain age would know how to fill out an oval. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, so, so, so let's just stop here. So, um, so the thing is this, what are we talking about? We're talking about the technology is changing. It has different capacities. There is a smart use of paper and a smart use of digital analytics. And, um, and then there is the whole battle over, you know, how are we gonna get access to using, or the public's gonna get access to using or doing any of this. And I'll leave it at that. So thank you.